guys. So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about growth factor serums and creams. This is a topic that has been highly requested. I've touched on it briefly in other videos here and there, but I thought I'd do a dedicated video on it. And I'm also going to be reviewing the Neocutis Bio Serum Firm Rejuvenating Growth Factor and Peptide Treatment. I applied for this product on the Octoly platform and was accepted. It was sent to me for free in exchange for this review. So I did not pay for this. I have been using it and will tell you about my experience, uh, but I am not being paid to review this product. It was just sent to me for free. Um, so yeah, what are growth factors? Growth factors are proteins that are secreted and they help in guiding cell growth, cell division, and cell differentiation, meaning they help cells in behaving the way that they're supposed to and, and living out their fate as a given cell type. Within the skin, growth factors are essential to maintaining healthy skin function. They are secreted by cells in both the top layer of the skin, which is called the epidermis, as well as cells in the bottom layer of the skin called the dermis. Uh, these different cell types include keratinocytes, fibroblasts, and melanocytes. And growth factors guide production of collagen. They help in orchestrating cell division within the cells. Growth factors are completely natural substances that our skin makes on its own in order to help in recovering from damage related to aging or environmental factors like ultraviolet radiation, tobacco smoke, and pollution. And within the deeper layers of the skin, growth factors promote the uh, formation of collagen and elastin. Collagen and elastin are really what give our skin uh, texture, it makes our skin full and hydrated, it gives our skin bounce and elasticity. And with age, we begin to lose some of the collagen and elasticity in our skin. With age, we also start uh, making fewer growth factors and there's a decline overall in the rate of growth factor production, contributing some of the visible signs of aging. So should we be applying growth factors to our skin to compensate for this age-related loss in growth factor synthesis? Well, there are some studies, several studies actually, over the past 15 years demonstrating that topical application of growth factor containing products um, do in fact lead to improvements in things like wrinkles, fine lines, pigmentation, and skin texture. However, these are mostly uh, industry funded studies and oftentimes they don't include appropriate controls. So sometimes there's really no way to know how a growth factor containing product compares to, compares to say just your ordinary moisturizer on the market. So you may be saying, well, if growth factors are so amazing, we start losing growth factors with age and that's what contributes to, to loss of collagen and elasticity in our skin along with UV damage and whatnot, then why wouldn't it be beneficial to apply them to the surface of the skin? Well, there's actually a lot of debate in dermatology as to whether or not topically applied uh, growth factors are actually useful or doing anything. And it's very, it's very suspect. First of all, growth factors are very large. So whether or not they actually get into the skin is very questionable. Now there's some debate on the pro topical growth factor side for the fact that as we get as we get wiser as our skin ages, our skin actually becomes thinner, so maybe we're better able to take up topical uh, growth factors than we were in in youth. It's been hypothesized that if they are applied at a high enough concentration, then at least a small enough fraction will actually get into the skin and potentially uh, help in guiding uh, collagen production, collagen synthesis, and in boosting um, the, the thickness of the deeper layers of the skin and improving wrinkles, fine lines, and overall skin texture. And importantly, in a lot of these studies, it's been demonstrated that it's actually more than just the growth factors uh, that are required. You need a combination of both growth factors and peptides as well as antioxidants in order to, to yield this type of a result. Uh, and that makes some sense because as part of our natural skin physiology, our natural the natural processes in our skin, it's not merely like, oh, a skin cell shoots out a growth factor and then all of a sudden we have a boost in collagen production. It's much more complicated than that. It is a, it is a cascade of events that requires multiple different participating partners, things like cytokines, 
and also different peptides and proteins all are needed to be in the same place in the same location and in the right amount and our skin knows how to do that but applying them onto the skin in the right amounts to yield those results is quite tricky and whether or not those amounts actually get into the skin in, to, to the amounts that they need to be in order to achieve that is really doubtful. <laughs> In clinical studies though, improvements have been demonstrated with the topical use of a growth factor containing product in as early as four to eight weeks, namely when combined with, uh, when the product is formulated to include vitamin C, peptides, and other antioxidants. But in my opinion, as a dermatologist, the role of topically applied growth factors to the skin, I, you know, I'm very, very suspicious. I believe that like most proteins and peptides, most large molecules in products, I think some of the improvement in the appearance of wrinkles, fine lines, skin texture is merely due to the fact that these compounds, because of their large size, help in holding on a little bit of water into the very top layers of our stratum corneum and therefore improve hydration just by holding on to water. They're not, they're not orchestrating any, compli uh, any complicated biology. They're really just holding on to water. And so here is, my, here is where I have reservation with growth factors in particular is because they're incredibly costly ingredients to manufacture and how they would compare to simply using a less costly known humectant like say glycerin or hyaluronic acid in yielding these outcomes, I, you know, I'm, I, I question whether or not we need to be shelling out the big box for a growth factor containing serum it's very doubtful that the growth factor actually even gets in to do what it needs to do along with the other other players on the team and uh you know whether or not it does that by truly changing skin biology and, and skin physiology or merely just holding on to water like hyaluronic acid would i would love to see more studies say comparing outcomes between using a product like neutrogena hydro boost hyaluronic acid gel cream in comparison to one of these more expensive growth factor containing serums i'd love to see a double blinded study comparing the two types of products in order for me to begin to believe that growth factors yield something better than your ordinary over-the-counter drugstore cosmeceutical humectant like hyaluronic acid in a hyaluronic acid serum. Where do these growth factors come from? They come from a variety of different sources depending on the manufacturer. Uh, they can come from human cells, whether it be fibroblasts, fat cells, or bone marrow stem cells. <clears throat> uh, they can also come from blood. Um, or they can be bioengineered in the lab, either from snail, um, snail secretions or from uh, plants. And it seems to be, at least in the, at least in the pharmaceutical literature, it seems to be that, and, and this makes some sense, that the, the best results are yielded through the use of human-derived growth factors from fibroblasts. And that makes sense. I mean, putting, putting the, the growth factors from from fat cells on the skin probably isn't gonna yield the same amount of compounds needed to change collagen synthesis. You'd really need the fibroblast cells. That, that's who normally does that in your skin. So it makes sense that you would see better results with that. So it seems like fibroblast, human fibroblasts are the best source of growth factors. All right, so that is where I have doubt as to the efficacy of growth factors. But what about the safety of using growth factors in topical products? Here's where I also have some current concerns as do many other dermatologists out there. Uh, first of all, the repeated use would be necessary and there is some concern that, you know, growth factors, while they help our normal skin and turnover and boosting collagen production and all those beneficial physiologic outcomes, if there is a pre-cancer skin cell in there, putting a growth factor on it is gonna make it grow like gangbusters, assuming that it actually gets in like they claim that it does. So that's, that's kind of dangerous. People who have a history of skin cancers, that, that's worrisome if this is getting in. So yeah, I mean, if, if the growth factors cause cell proliferation, that, that you know, is, is kind of what you're wanting, you, you have to also question if there's a pre-skin cancer or pre-cancerous cell there, are you driving are you driving malignant, are you pushing the boundary for malignant transformation? So that's always a, a risk, but given that they're so large in size and, and we're really doubtful that they even work, uh, it seems it seems like, like a low, low risk. 
Uh, so really it just underscores the fact that these products probably mostly work just as humectants and they're not really changing the physiology of your skin. That's just my suspicion. Uh, you know, I'd like to see more research, uh, more, more research comparing, comparing, um, comparing the growth factor products to just run of the mill humectants in moisturizers like glycerin or, or hyaluronic acid, sodium hyaluronate. How, how do they compare as far as yielding, yielding these clinical results of improvement in wrinkles, fine lines, skin, tex skin texture, etc. The other concern is that a lot of fibroblast derived growth factors include something called TGF, transforming growth factor. TGF is actually what is implicated in the pathophysiology of scar formation. So, you know, if you're using a TGF growth factor containing serum, and you're not really necessarily gonna know if it has TGF, that specific growth factor in there, because the manufacturer is really only gonna tell you their proprietary blend, and they may tell you where it's, what the source is, what the, what the cell, cellular source is, but they're not gonna tell you if it's fibroblast growth factor, or T, uh, transforming growth factor, or epidermal growth factor. They're not gonna tell you the specific type of growth factor necessarily. So, you know, with putting TGF on the skin, it may potentially increase your risk of scarring if it actually gets into the dermis to, to influence skin cell biology. And then lastly, it's a matter of, are growth factors actually stable? I mean, in our body, our cell puts them out when it's needed, along with the other factors that are needed in the right amounts and the right recipe. But putting it in a bottle, uh, you know, you have to worry about stability. And also, once you put it on your skin, uh, how long does it stay stable on the surface of the skin while it's trying to trickle down into your skin to actually, you know, actually, does it actually get to, to a biologically relevant amount? Probably not, but anyways. So that's what I can tell you about growth factors, some theoretical concerns, uh, and some potential benefits. Uh, so are they worth it? You know, I'm not really sure how they compare to just using a hyaluronic acid serum. So I've been trying out the bio serum firm by Neocutis. This is a growth factor containing uh, product. Uh, it has a combination of growth factors derived from uh, fibroblast, uh, fibroblast cells, human fibroblast cells that were cultured. Uh, so you'll see on the ingredient list, I think it's called cell lysate. So that basically includes what the cells have been making in a dish um, in terms of growth factors and other things like peptides. They also add some synthetic peptides to this and antioxidants. This also has vitamin C. It has amino propyl ascorbyl phosphate, a uh, stabilized form of vitamin C. Um, and I'm happy to see that it is free of added fragrance. So that's great. You know, a lot of other uh, competitors on the market you will see have added fragrance, which is just putting you at risk for irritation. This product has squalane in it. I've got a video talking about squalane. It is a lightweight uh, uh, oily substance that is a wonderful emollient. And this also has um, some humectants as well. It's got sodium hyaluronate and hy hydrolyzed hyaluronic acid, as well as some algae-derived extracts, marine extracts, which as I said in my video on, on sea, seaweed and skincare, uh, seaweed-derived extracts, marine plant-derived extracts are really excellent humectants. So, you know, this has all of their proprietary blend in it, but it still has it still has the ordinary garden variety humectants that you can find in any any other any other product out there on the market uh, that you can go to the drugstore and buy. Like like I said, the Neutrogena Hydro Boost um, gel cream is a hyaluronic acid gel cream. How how does it compare to this? Uh, you know, we don't have that kind of data. So honestly, this has most of the garden variety humectants that you will find in any drugstore humectant serum. It has uh, glycerin and it's got sodium hyaluronate and hyaluronic acid. It also has marine extracts in it. It's got a variety of, of algae extracts. Uh, and there, I mean, you'll find them in tons of products. That, that Walmart moisturizer equa equation has, has that in, in, in the product. So these, this particular product has all of those ingredients in it. So why am I going on about that? Well, unlike the Neutrogena Hydro Boost uh, Extra Dry Sensitive Skin Gel Cream or their Neutrogena Hydro Boost Fragrance Free Body Lotion or the Equation Body Lotion, you know, unlike those uh, just garden variety, plain moisturizers that you buy at the drugstore, this product is $275. Uh, you know, so thank you Octoly for sending it to me, but that is, that's really expensive. So you are paying $275 with the belief 
that the growth factor and peptide milieu in this, and the vitamin C milieu, I should say, is going to deliver something to your skin in terms of actually boosting collagen production and altering skin elasticity over what you would get if you bought a product that just had hyaluronic acid and glycerin and water, which you can get at the drugstore. I mean, you're really hanging your hat on that. And, you know, so hopefully this video clarifies to you that there's a very good chance that the growth factor milieu in this doesn't even get into the skin. I mean, that growth factors are very large molecules. So you're paying a lot of money for a very expensive and costly ingredient that might not even get into your skin. Um, and you know we don't have comparator data to say that the level of hydration that growth factor containing topicals like this yield is any different than just using a hyaluronic acid moisturizer or a glycerin you know glycerin containing product. The company really has to put a lot of a lot of money and in, in R and D into it. Uh, they are um, MERS, I think. So I mean you know they're a pharmaceutical company. I trust them as far as the synthesis and and whatnot. You know I think they they probably do due diligence by this product. So you know I think if you're gonna if you're gonna invest in growth factors, I I actually do like this product. I just, you know, I can't tell you that it's worth spending this kind of money on a topical product that probably doesn't do much beyond what you would get from using a moisturizer. You know, that being said, I've actually really enjoyed using this product. Again, like I said, it's free of added fragrance. Uh, it's actually cruelty free, not tested on animals. And uh, it is, uh, you know, it comes in um, an airless pump dispenser, so you have a little bit of insurance, a little bit of extra insurance there as far as product stability. It's not going to be exposed to air. I do believe that this product should last you approximately four months. I've been using it for six weeks now, and you know, I have no, I have no idea actually how far along I am in it, but I feel like I have quite a bit more left in this. You don't actually need a lot of it. So the way to use this product though is to put it onto your skin while your skin is damp after you've just cleansed it. And the reason for that is that's really when your skin barrier is kind of open and probably would yield greater greater penetration of the, of the growth factors and whatnot, theoretically. So you probably get better results. You really only need a, a very small amount, um, just you know, two, two tiny little dots on the finger to the entire face and neck. So you really don't need a whole lot, you know, just two little little pea-sized amounts to the finger pads is about all that I have been using. Um, but importantly, after you put it on and, and get it all over your face, down the sides of your neck, um, after that, you want to come on with a, a heavier moisturizer on top. And the reason for that is that if you just stop there and leave that as is, what will happen is your skin will actually, because there's so many humectants in this and there's nothing that's creating a seal on, on top, uh, that water that's being held there on the surface of your damp skin will actually start evaporating out of your skin and pulling more water out and lead to dryness and irritation. It'll kind of get this filmy, filminess, uh, you know, the product will dry like kind of filmy and that's not desirable and you're not going to be happy with it. So the way to do it, put it on while the skin is damp, you don't need a whole lot to the entire face and neck, and then come on with a fragrance-free moisturizer. I will list some fragrance-free moisturizers down below that are fantastic for oily skin and then some that are fantastic for really, really dry skin, like a, like a heavy duty moisturizer for winter skin. Uh, either category would be adequate for putting on on top of this. So at the end of the day, is this product worth it or not? Personally, I don't think I can in good faith tell any of you, anyone, regardless of your income level and how much you're comfortable spending, I don't think I could reasonably tell you, yes, you should be spending this kind of money on a skincare product. You know, the reason for that, the, you know, my reservation is that I think your money would be, if you're looking for skin rejuvenation and anti-aging, you know, you want to improve wrinkles and fine lines and whatnot, you're better served to invest, to save your money and, and go to a dermatologist and have procedures done like a resurfacing laser uh, and whatnot that, that truly can change change the appearance of, of those visible signs of photo aging. Personally, in my experience using this as a human being, I've tried a lot of, of serums, humectant serums, and I honestly have not seen any difference between the Neocutis $275 serum versus just using a plain moisturizer alone. I've not seen any difference. 
Uh, so, you know, maybe it's too early to tell, but I really don't believe I'm going to see any difference uh, in comparison to those. I've been using it, like I said, for about six weeks, and some of the studies show that you can begin seeing visible signs of improvement in photo aging in as early as four weeks. $275 is pretty steep. But I hope this video was helpful to you guys. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.